When you love someone, you've got to trust them. There's no other way. You got to give them the key to everything that's yours. Otherwise, what's the point? And for a while, I believed that's the kind of love I had. Wait, 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 wait. One of the biggest innovation in Scorsese's filmography is certainly the use of a narrative technique, the voiceover. As Sarah Kotsov describes this narrative technique, she tells us that, basically, in the voiceover narration, all three words are fully operative. Voice. As far back as I could remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Because we hear someone speaking. Over. My name is Jordan Belfort. Not him. Me. Because the voice heard comes from another time and space of the discourse. Narration. Years ago, we had the church. That was only a way of saying we had each other. Because someone is in the act of recounting a series of events to the audience. It was used for the first time in the noir genre to accompany the spectator into the story and psychology of the main character. How could I have known that murder can sometimes smell like honeysuckle? Maybe you would have known, Keys, the minute she mentioned accident insurance. But I didn't. I felt like a million. Yes, this is Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. It's about five o'clock in the morning. That's the Homicide Squad, complete with detectives and newspaper men. Three days later, at 10.15 on a Tuesday morning, Johnny Clay began the final preparations. In novels, we read an interior monologue that represents the thoughts of the characters. Instead, on screen, it is necessary we hear a voiceover that can be the main character's voice or an omniscient narrator. It had never for a moment questioned the propriety of Madame Olenska's conduct. It had never questioned Archer's fidelity. And it had never heard of, suspected, or even conceived possible. This type of narration has been frequently used by other directors, but not as often and refreshing as Scorsese, that delights his spectator with many different types of voiceover. He gives you immediately the insights on where, when, who, and why. He presents to you all the characters. Was Anthony Stabile, Frankie Carbone, and then there was Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy, Sea Otter, who sold meat and weed, Chester, who sold tires and weed, and Robbie, who sold anything he could get his hands on, mostly weed. This is Brad. And his guys, Frankie the Wop, Freddie No Nose. And then there was Pete the Killer, who was Sally Balls' brother. And you had Nicky Eyes. What's up, guy? And Mikey Franchese. And Jimmy Two Times, who got that nickname because he said everything twice, like... I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. He explains to you words or things you probably didn't know, since you're not a gangster. paint his painted houses. You want to take out the bodyguard first. Not kill him. Don't kill him. Just disable him. You got no argument with him. So not in the face or the chest. And he makes the main character speak directly to the audience, breaking through the fourth wall. What I'm asking, you Swiss dick, is are you going to fuck me over? I understand perfectly, you American shit. Hmm. Was that yodeling I just heard, or did you just say what I thought you said? Yes, yes. He's telling me to use a fucking rat hole, but a US rat hole would never get into Switzerland with all that money. What I needed was a rat hole with a European passport. As far as Jimmy was concerned, with Tommy being made, it was like we were all being made. And most importantly, his voice is over. Never take away the surprise to be shocked. We would now have one of our own as a member. 
because he never anticipates the plot twist. Otherwise, what's the point? And for a while, I believed that's the kind of love I had. 